Okay, so we're going to do a video on making this tricopter. Um, it's been a really nice build, this one, and uh, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. Um, the key thing that I've done is uh, I've made this fit onto a piece of plywood, one foot by two foot. Um, yes, this might be one foot square, but you need to double it up. So you've got two pieces of plywood one foot square. Uh, the first stage of this build is to print out the plans, cut them out and stick them to one bit of wood. Okay, so you can see I've stuck the pieces of paper onto the wood. Nothing special about that, but I have used um, a stick glue. And the reason I use that is it's easy to peel the paper off afterwards. The next stage you might be able to see is to uh, pin through or tack through the two bits of wood on each piece um, and I've just done those with I suppose half inch little tacks. Um, so that's next and then once you've done that you can then cut out the bits. There isn't really much to say about the cutting. Um, ultimately you want to take your time try and get it as accurate as possible. Uh, what I tend to do is go around the perimeter around these edges I'll then quickly put them on the sander once I'm happy the perimeter is okay I'll then carefully cut the slots uh, on each slot I then test fit a piece of plywood just to make sure it's the right um, size so I've finished this central hub off it's still pinned together and you can see I've uh, done all the slots drilled all the holes and I've even done these two slots which is where the uh, battery will be mounted this is the only one I'm going to show you how to make I don't really need to do it for all the rest of the bits and uh, this is the only bit I'm actually going to make this time because I've already made a model. And the only reason I'm doing this bit is so I can show you the difference between this bit and the original. Um, I discovered when I was flying this that I really needed to put the battery out here. So I've modified the central plate to allow the battery to fit nicely in the back. So this is the bit I find most rewarding. Uh, you have to spend a couple of hours cutting out all the bits. And then you've got to make sure the bits uh, fit all the slots the correct size and then do a bit of sanding around where you've drilled the uh, holes with a hole saw um, so now I'm just going to go through uh, putting together a couple of the items I've already put this arm together and that's gluing at the moment so this is all the bits you'll have for your model so we're going to start with the arm take one side join it on to that bit join on the other arm make sure you get it right way up Once that's in, put one of these in. Now all these bits, for example this bit, um, is designed to go uh, forward, backwards, top, bottom. They're both bits the same and symmetrical either way. So once you've done that, a little bit, put that in the side there, make sure that fits nicely. And then this time we're going to put that in there and push it down. And the last bit to go on is this. And then obviously you're going to have to glue everything in place. And we've got this bit here which is just a doubler for where the motor mounts. So that's that arm. We'll now have a look at the uh, servo arm. So we're now going to build up the uh, servo arm. So we're going to take a side piece take one of these pieces this cut out here is for the servo wire it needs to be uh, the side that you want to push the servo in from and then take the bottom and push that on put the other one of these in like so and then put the other side on. Then we're going to put the top on. This was the same as the bottom right up until the last moment when you cut that section off. And then the last bit is to put this bit in. And there you go. So now let's uh, finish this off with the uh, motor mount. So 
we take this piece, take that, slide that over, take the other bit, slide it over, and add the two sides onto it. Uh, like that. So there you go. That is designed to go in like so. The cutouts here will allow the uh, wires from the motor to come out. And as explained, this cutout here will allow the servo wire to go in. So I've got a servo here, push the wire in. And that will then go in like so. The idea being that once that's uh, screwed in place you'll be have a rod going from here down to your servo. So now I'm just going to glue everything together and uh, start getting the motors in. Okay so we're progressing quite well. We've uh, stuck all the uh, bits of wood together and just pushed them all into the central hub. And I'm now doing the wiring. Uh, you can see I've mounted the uh, motors. Uh, I've actually used the motor mount that came with the kit. Um, I was slightly disappointed that um, I didn't really think about the wires going through here. Uh, but thankfully there was a little bit of a gap where the hole is drilled through the end to allow you to feed the wires through to a speed controller. So actually it looks quite neat. Um, you can see I've removed the uh, covers off these speed controllers. They're actually uh, Hobby Power super simple speed controllers and uh, I uh, prefer to put Simon Co firmware on them. Um, that way you can adjust parameters if you wish. Um, also you can adjust the forward and reverse rotation fairly easily via the servo wire. Um, at the same time I've got the covers off. I've uh, took the opportunity to add uh, some little uh, wires here which as you can see on this one I'll feed through the frame and then they power the lights on either side. I've gone for red on the back and green on the front with the servo motor being ultimately at the very front. Um, on the power wires you can see I've just uh, added a four inch piece of wire, uh, soldered those so they'll have the heat shrinks over and then I'll common the whole lot together with this connector but I'm actually going to feed the power cables through the hole and put all the power terminals underneath so this will look quite a clean model. So now I've finished the motor connectors and added the battery connector that's the power done um, so now it's just down to fitting the KK um, flight controller. Uh, you can see here the arrow is pointing towards two motors. So this is the front. Um, and then as per the standard configuration for a tri, this is motor number one, number two, and number three. So they go to the corresponding channels, number one, number two, and number three. And then the server goes to number four. Uh, obviously the uh, receiver channels just match up with what it says on the board. I think it's written on the back of the board. Um, and that's basically it. The standard settings are as you can see there. Um, and they seem to work quite well. The only thing you're going to have to change is if you uh, go into the mixer editor, scroll down to number 4 which is the servo, and then change the rudder value from positive 100 to negative 100. And that's it. Now you should be able to fly this quite nicely on those settings. Um, but what I like to do is I like to go into the mode settings and change the self level to always on. And because I've already flown this, I know that uh, it benefits from going into the PI, sorry, PI editor and changing the P gain to 75 from 65. And that will help uh, with the control. If you wish to fly this model the opposite way around, that's to say the arrow would be pointing towards the single leg, you're going to have to go into the mixer editor and change the values for R and P, that's uh, roll and pitch, for the, the three motors. Um, I've quickly worked that out and these would be the values you'd have to add. Um, I prefer flying mine this way around, so that's what I'm going to do now, uh, but I'll just quickly do a demonstration of this flying in the standard configuration.